Did you even know that one of the officers involved in the death of Breonna Taylor is on trial for a third time right now? Third time. Opening statements began today in the federal retrial of former Louisville police officer Brett Hankinson. He was one of the officers present during the 2020 raid that resulted in the tragic death of Brianna after her boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, fired a shot at police. Hankston fired 10 shots that night. None of them hit Taylor or her boyfriend, but several did strike Taylor's neighbor, uh, so that home, not the neighbor, the neighbor's home, where a man, a pregnant woman, and their five-year-old son were sleeping at the time. Now, none of them were injured. The officers were serving a warrant in a search of Brianna's ex-boyfriend, who they suspected of dealing drugs. He wasn't there. Taylor's current boyfriend was, and he was the one who fired at the officers when they came in as he was sleeping. Now, it sure seems that Hankison's actions were reckless, and for that he was fired, most likely rightfully so. And there were a lot of issues with this case. But that doesn't mean you have to put him in prison. Except this seems to be one of those cases where they have to prosecute as many times and as often as possible. Hankison was acquitted on state charges in March of 2022. This is part of his testimony where he expressed sympathy for the neighbors whose home was hit with several of his shots. I felt sincere empathy for them. That was something, if my daughter was, was shot at or bullets came into our house, that would be very concerning, and I apologize to her for that. And Miss Taylor's family, it was just... She didn't need to die that night. He was found not guilty by a jury on all three counts of wanton endangerment in the first degree for the shots fired into the neighbor's home. But it's not even his second trial. A federal trial ended in a mistrial a little less than a year ago when the jury could not agree on a verdict on any of the charges that Hankison violated the civil rights of Breonna Taylor, her boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, and their three neighbors. Now, I've got to believe in almost any other case where the guy was acquitted on state charges and the federal case just hung, and arguably the federal case is even tougher to prove because you have to basically have it be intentional, they would drop it, but not here. Why? Let's be honest. It's because this case is so politically charged. And at least in their opening statements, prosecutors seem to be making the same arguments. Don't shoot at what you can't see. He couldn't see whether innocent people were in the line of fire. He fired anyway. It's true. But he was acquitted of the wanton endangerment charges. He's now again charged with the federal charge, violating civil rights, Taylor. And in the opening statements, the defense again argued, quote, none of his rounds hit anybody. He doesn't shoot wildly. His patterns are close. A policy violation is not always a criminal act. And that is also true. So what if we see another hung jury? Then what? Are they going to try him again? Faces a possible sentence of life in prison if convicted. Joining us now is Randy Sellen. Criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor. Randy, good to see you. So what do you make of the prosecution here and what do you expect the outcome will be? Well, to me, two things resonate. First of all, this notion of don't shoot what you can't see, that is a hallmark of reckless behavior. Reckless behavior is very simply when you should be aware of what you're going to do could have really bad consequences, but you close your eyes to that right. and you go ahead and do it anyway, as opposed to intentional conduct, which is where it is your conscious objective to do something. So as soon as you start talking about don't shoot what you can't see, that presupposes if you can't see it, it wasn't your intention to do so, something so let's specific, just pause but you for a second. close your eyes. Right, Randy, but let's pause just so people are clear. In the state case, they were, he was charged with reckless. He was acquitted. In the federal case, which is what he's facing now, it's a higher standard, right, where it has to have basically been on purpose to do it. And that seems like a very tough conviction to get. But you didn't get the first time. So what makes you think that you're going to get it a second time? Are you going to keep trying until finally you exhaust the jury process, and maybe you actually find 12 people to say, my God, we better convict this guy because this is just never going to end. That is no way for the criminal justice system to behave. And by the way, the prosecution, the government's got one other built-in problem. Miles Cosgrove, who fired six more shots and actually killed Miss Taylor, was never charged, period, full stop. And you're going to have him, what, testify? 
uh, against uh, Mr. Hankinson. This is, I get it. I understand, as you said, it's politically charged. It's horrifying. It's white on black. It's everything that we hate. But sometimes you just have to say no. Right. But let, let's let's be clear. You agree with me that that at this point, after an acquittal in the state charge, a hung jury in the federal charge, in any other case, they wouldn't be retrying this. Absolutely no way, no how. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your screen. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.